I guess I can get up here. Is this on? Ah, uh, there we go. I always imagine that I'm just going to walk off of this anyway. Well, I would like to welcome you all. Thanks for coming. Uh, really appreciate it. As you can see, we've had three of these on the West Coast. So on average, we're now as far east as Reno. But anyway, it was good to see uh, good attendance here. These are interesting. Uh, these are an interesting thing, and I think one of the questions that will maybe float sometime is, why are we doing these things? Uh, we do very little selling here. I mean, we, we like to show, I have a picture that I, I took out of the New York Times because they never mentioned us. That's the uh, California ISO. It's in the new control room we call, lovingly, the Taj Mahal. But it's where they run all the power for the 11 Western states, 11, uh, Western Canada, and Western Mexico. But that's kind of what we do, and so that's the end of that. So we put these things together because we have a challenge. We have to build software for uh, industrial base. That's what we do. It takes about seven years to build a product, more or less. Now, I want you to say, sit there and imagine Tell me what the systems are going to look like in seven years. And if you think you know, go back seven years and say how accurate you would have been about today. Um, have you tried the network at the hotel? Barely runs. That's caused by the iPad. We didn't expect that. Uh, did we think we were going to run out of the internet? Four applications use over half of it. Do we like being ahead in the world? Well, Korea and Japan are pulling 1G to the home right now, and we struggle to get a one megabit line. So what is this cloud going to look like? We have to understand that. We have to listen to the winds and try to come up with our best decisions. So what I decide, and I know our customers have to do the same, and we've had a long tradition in the last uh, 30, 31 years of not only just taking our software from generation to generation, but taking our customers with us. And just to put that into perspective, there's over 20,000 of them. They're in over 110 different countries. I mean, they asked me today how many countries, and I don't know. It was 110 last I knew, but it might be higher now. And these are all different levels of sophistication, but they're not really all IT people. Sometimes they run refineries or mines or, or whatever. So we have to understand where the world's going to the best of our ability make our decisions, and redo things when we're wrong. So the more we understand about where things are going, the better it is. So we started running these really to try to initiate that educational exercise. And a couple of things just to note, and I, I really butcher his last name, Terry Tamman. We had on the first one, we had Don Paul, who was at the time CTO of Chevron, and Terry Tamman, who was the author of AB32 in California. Does everybody know what AB32 is? Hmm. It bans coal. I guess you can ban a chemical. It's, it's, it's something that we ought to do because we can. But now that means California can't even, they can't bring coal in and they can't buy power that's made from coal. That's a little hard to operate. So then what we did is we said, okay, we're gonna shut down all of our coastal power plants because they go through once through. Okay, that makes it a little more challenging. And then we say we're gonna go 33% renewables in a really remarkable implementation. What does that do? Well, that means you have to take out your big baseload units and now use peaker units. So we like challenges, but we heard that we heard that four years ago because Don Paul from Chevron was saying, hey guys, this doesn't scale. He said, that's why biofuels people always talk in terms of gallons per year because if you compared them on the same basis as the refinery, they're running less than one of the units. And so we could see these things aren't going to scale. That means we're going to be going certain ways with our, our development. And we got, a, we got a, lot of, uh, a lot of interesting comments on that. In one of the later ones, I think two years ago, we met at the Institute for the Americas in San Diego, which is an interesting institute. It uh, does a lot of work with uh, how, to, how to the Americas cooperate. But we had there, we had 
uh, Sudin Kelly, who was uh, FERC commissioner for six and a half years. We had the head of our California ISO was there, but we also brought in a few customers. In particular, we brought in Alcoa. Alcoa uh, basically is an aluminum smelter that plays on the grid. And today we'll have another example of that, of big industrial users participating in the grid. You know, Dave said we, we, we like this trans-something trans data, but really what it means is it means that this industrial base is a player and you can't ignore them. But if you go to the power industry, they'll say, oh, industrial people, they got to take it. It's just like you plug in the wall. They can't, they can't change their operation. Well, of course they can't because they're not paid if they do. From the industrial side, they say, well, they use this as a big flywheel. They just don't want to pay for it. So we run with a complete separation, which is very inefficient. But everyone sort of accepts that because we like to get into a plan and not change, you know, fear change. So it was very interesting to see Alcoa and ISO and FERC all talking together. And it was remarkable that how wrong we were. And so we're starting to see that change. We're starting to see that in the winds. We'll hear, we'll hear comments about how we now know how to get more efficiency out of the gas. And we now know exactly, not exactly, but we now know how this is going to happen. What we translate that to be is that there's now a new element of data that has to be managed because when you're trying to control and bill and manage uh, how systems work together across a regulatory, financial, whatever border, it's non-trivial. It's very, very difficult. So should we do this? Well, you look at the U.S. Uh, are we going to compete with cheap raw materials? I don't think so. Uh, cheap labor? I don't think so. Our main competition is in intellectual property. The U.S. has some 90% plus of all the intellectual property delivered in the world. What is the power system going to become but a big model-based management of resources? And oh, by the way, we need to reduce those at the same time. And you have the sustainability efforts coming along. So we learned that. This time we have, in Washington, we expect to hear a lot about the policies and how those affect us. We heard some interesting, funny ways to describe the policy last night with the capital steps. But now we're going to hear some of the real stuff. We're going to hear how the users are coping with it. And we're going to, again, try to make this decision on where we spend our money. And we have major decisions coming up. People love to talk about the cloud. That's interesting. If the internet is saturated, you can't get across it, and the telecom companies charge you an arm and a leg, do we really, are we really going to go to have a cloud? And we have to know that if we're going to build for it. So this is for us to listen. Uh, this is for you to listen. And I wish you have a good day of it, and I hope it's valuable to you. And I thank you very much for coming. Bye.